it's quite scary if you think about it that we're what 27 years into democracy 27 years into um our constitutional dispensation and we're having discussions about whether or not a sports star may or may not associate with a political movement Cricket South Africa has issued a declaration that all members of the national cricket team must take the knee in recognition of the Black Lives Matter movement. But one cricketer, Quinton de Kock, has refused to do so, and he has been sidelined from the team. Joining me to discuss the legal implications of this is Daniel Eloff. He is an attorney with Hertus Peace Attorneys. Daniel, welcome to the CRA channel. Could you tell our viewers what are some of the legal issues that may arise for Cricket South Africa here? Are they in breach of our labor law? Yes, indeed. I, I, the first question that we have to ask ourselves is whether or not the labor law is applicable. And I think quite certainly it is. Um, Quinton de Kock, if you look at his circumstances specifically and other cricket players, they're contracted by Cricket South Africa. We have legal precedence which indicates that the sport players, when they're contracted by their sport union or governing body, they're considered as employees. And consequently, we have to d- decide and determine whether or not uh, the directives issued by Cricket South Africa are in fact, therefore, fair labour practices, uh, and whether or not Quentin de Kock or any other prettier player might be discriminated against by the employer due to some uh, expression or some association, or actually in this instance, a refusal to associate with a particular uh, political stance, whether that's acceptable or not. And the labor questions then sort of substantiated through a constitutional lens when you then look at the right to equality, the right to freedom of association, and the right to freedom of expression. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30-day free trial for more content from the CIA. Okay, and obviously these rights are in tension with one another, and there's the limitations clause, section 36. Um, But nevertheless, it seems that on its face, uh, that those constitutional principles are being violated in this case. Yes, indeed. It, it, I mean, I think Prima Farke, you could definitely say so. And I, I think the important distinction we have to make is this is not an active, you know, uh, um, decision by Quentin de Kock. It's not as if he's he's saying, well, I will not play for the Britias because you associate with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. What he's simply saying is he refuses to bend the knee before a cricket match and there, because he's refusing, he's now unable to play and he's unable to fulfill his contractual duties towards his employer. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's not an instance, as we've seen in the past, where sports stars take a political position and then they sort of discriminate it against or they're marginalized because of their political views um, and, and, you know, actively doing something. In this case, Quinton de Kock's not doing something and he's being marginalized and discriminated against. So, Daniel, you've offered to represent any cricketers or other sports people who might be discriminated against in this way. Um, How would they go about uh, initiating such a a legal process? What would be the first steps? So, well, firstly, any player is welcome to contact us. We'll uh, I'll send you our contact details. We can put in the description of the video uh, and uh, we'll then initiate the process to first try dialogue with Cricket South Africa. I mean, at, at this point, it's, it's sort of, you don't want to rush into any dispute, uh, w- whether or not it's at the CCMA or the Labour Court or any other court or forum. Uh, you first want to sort of engage with Cricket South Africa to see, can't you come to some solution to, to the whole uh, situation? Um, from there going forward, should those discussions then fail, then you'll have to consider your options. And you'll also have to have a look at two particular things. Firstly, what does the employment contract of the particular player say? And then secondly, what are the particular circumstances of that cricket player um, and, and how actively are they being marginalized and to what extent are they being marginalized? So you'll have to approach it on sort of an ad hoc basis from uh, player to player. But um, hopefully this starts a, an important discussion regarding uh, freedom of association, regarding uh, liberty and regarding people being able to say what they want as long as it's sort of within the constitutionally accepted scope of speech. So Daniel, section 16 of the constitution says that all South Africans have the right to freedom of expression. There are some reasonable and justifiable limitations on that right, uh, such as calls to imminent violence or the advocacy of hatred based on race, ethnicity, gender, or religion that also constitutes 
incitement to cause harm. But the general principle of freedom of expression is a critical one for a free society and a democratic country such as South Africa. Do you think that CSA is potentially in breach of this right? Indeed. I mean, a freedom of expression, freedom of speech is sort of the bedrock of any democracy. It's, it, you have to be able to um, voice your opinion within a democracy for politics and democracy to function properly. And the fact that speech, whether or not you believe Quentin de Kock is right or not, it's, it's sort of uh, um, irrelevant. The point is, the question is, should a sports star be able to refuse to be compelled into certain speech, to be, to be compelled to adopt a certain uh, association with a movement. And it, it, it's quite scary if you think about it, that we're what, 27 years into democracy, 27 years into um, our constitutional dispensation, and we're having discussions about whether or not a sports star may or may not associate with a political movement. It, it, it's quite astounding, to be honest. Yeah, and I think what was striking earlier uh, when this controversy erupted about a year ago so that the, the cricket players decided to basically follow their freedom of conscience uh, some players uh, were kneeling some were raising a fist um, and some uh, were just uh, you know omitting any action um, mm -hmm. but you know that was a kind of an individual choice that each cricketer was was able to make but now it seems that CSA has taken a very uh, iron-fisted approach. Um, and it also seems uh, from an outsider's perspective that CSA itself is in administrative disarray. Uh, financially, uh, the cricket administrators are, are, are struggling quite a lot. And perhaps this is a bit of a deflection device um, you know, to, to draw attention away from their own failings. Yes, I mean, you sort of have to decide and look, well, what priorities are we, you know, prioritizing? And is this really the sort of issue that South Africa wants to tackle? I mean, I would argue that South Africa still lacks serious actual transformation within cricket. And now we're focusing sort of on these um, uh, virtue signaling issues that are quite superficial, to be honest, whether or not Quentin de Kock takes the knee or, or not for before against BLM, um, I, I would say it really doesn't matter when you look at the grander scheme of things when we actually want to develop the, the sport. Uh, so, so it does sort of seem as a deflection by Cricket South Africa, which we know for the past decade has been in, in administrative disarray. And for them to now suddenly come with, with uh, this directive compelling all players to, to adhere to their pieties is, is quite ridiculous. And I, I, perhaps the last thing I'd just like to mention is we, we, we have to keep in mind that sport is, is, is an extremely important thing in South Africa, and it, it plays a huge role. And uh, it, it does unite. And, and it's quite clear that this BLM question isn't the unifying topic, as I think Cricket South Africa initially thought. And the fact that you refuse to take a knee doesn't mean you're suddenly against any anti-racist movement. I mean, it, it, it's not the only way to, to show your solidarity against racism within a sport. There are many other ways to, to do that, but uh, being compelled to show solidarity certainly can't be considered as solidarity because it's suddenly mandated and it, it no longer sends the powerful message that you think it sends. Daniel Eloff, thank you very much for joining us on the CRA channel. Let's hand over to you, our viewers. What do you make of Quinton de Kock's decision not to take the knee? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel as well. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.